Uh, this is an email we've had saying, um, Carl, what do you take by the uh, well-known saying, a stitch in time saves nine? Or oh, a stitch in time saves nine. Yeah. See, uh, it's another one that I don't, I don't think I've picked up on a lot of these sayings that are being sort of thrown about willy-nilly. Uh, willy-nilly? <laughs> willy-nilly-nilly. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Willy-nilly. No, yeah. no, but I, I, again, it's one of them, like, like last week, I've heard of it, but... But what I've does never... willy-nilly mean? It just sort of means, you know, carefree. That's right, yeah. So OK, but what good. does a stitch in time so save nine So you understood willy-nilly, so you used a phrase. Yeah, it sounds I mean, nice, you used it, it, you said it willy nilly But, um, uh, you, you sort of got the gist of it. So what does a stitch in time saves nine mean? I, I, I don't know. You what do you mean you know? don't know? Think about it. A stitch in time saves nine. Is it to do with sewing? Well, yeah, sort of. Uh so okay, if, it's not that clear. So if, not... You got a, so if you've got a jacket... Yeah. ...and the seam starts coming undone... Oh. There's a little bit of seam. I'll leave it. Oh, it's getting worse and right, worse. Right. Soon your sleeve falls off. So, you just need one stitch there, that'll do it. If you do it now, later you'll need nine stitches. And that, of course, uh, is an analogy to other things. But it depends if you're busy at that point, because if you've got, <laughs> if you've got something else that needs doing, that means that isn't being done, because you're messing about putting sort of a hole in your coat. Is what I mean. Yeah. You can't always do stuff straight away, so maybe... I don't know. I don't know if there's a, a, a sort of a middle ground where you don't have to do it straight away, but stitching a stitch sometimes time, today, say in fifteen or whatever, meaning yeah. you don't have to do it straight away, but just do it before it gets really bad. Brilliant. Do you think yours is less poetic than than a stitching time saves nine? So yours is. This is what you wanted to be a quote, right? Well, well, you could do it now, but if you're doing something else, then uh, you know. Look, well, well, don't do it immediately, but do it soon so it doesn't get really bad. Carl Pilkington. <laughs> no, but it's the same. That's the same way I treat most things in life. It's like I never go to the doctors unless it's really bad. That is sensible. Bad. That is very good advice. No, that's brilliant advice well, for anyone is, listening. Never go to the doctors unless it's really bad. But that's why a lot of people, you know, um, die because they don't want to bother the doctor or they're mildly embarrassed or they don't know. Um, symptoms, bad symptoms. Go to the doctor if 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 you if you're not sure about something. Like you were terrified to go and have your prostate. Still not been not doing it. Why not? I wish you wouldn't talk about it because now Suzanne will listen to this and she'll go, oh, yeah, you haven't been and start dragging it up again. But why are you worried about a a little uh, a, a qualified doctor? I don't know what they're doing up there. What they what just what year the... are we in? They. <laughs> talking about they pop their finger up that's what i mean though why why are they still using the index finger <laughs> what would you prefer the forefinger or the thumb would no. you <laughs> no what i mean no. is we've got or a thumb on a stick some kind of thumb on a stick you yeah would you prefer it to a be mechanical thumb a robot okay. thumb why isn't it just a little camera well, well they put the camera up if, if they initially discover something but just put the camera up straight away. If no, they don't the need visit. to. They pop the finger up, feel that the prostate isn't swollen, wiggle it around a little bit, that'd be a, 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 up your back passage. They, what I are just, you worried I, about? I don't think they, they need to do are that. Are you embarrassed? Are you embarrassed about being in a room with your trousers around your ankles and a little fellow popping A this? little bit, yeah. Why? And the other thing is, it's not just that, is it? So, <laughs> you go in there, they check your heart out and that, which to me is the most important thing, because that's what keeps you going, isn't it? <laughs> yeah! Right? You've got to go there. You yeah. sat on the bus, stressing out, thinking, oh... In less than half an hour, I'm going to have a finger up the arse, right? <laughs> what is the problem, And they go though? in, they check your heart, they probably <laughs> check your testicles and that. What's up with that? They check your testicles, yeah. That's... Yeah, but it's all building, and you, you've sat there going, oh, soon that'll, that'll be happening. Yeah. And that's what puts me off. So if they just came round when you were asleep, <laughs> Suzanne just let them in and goes, he's over there, right? Yeah. And they crept up and went, <laughs> bang, you, you go, what are you doing? That. I just don't understand why they don't teach you how to do it yourself. How can they... <laughs> wow! How can they teach... Imagine you squatting in a corner with one hand on your bollocks and the other finger up the arse going, it seems to be all right. Carl, you don't understand the phrase a stitch in time saves night. I don't think you should be doing any kind of invasive medical research in your own human body. But, but then... Who knows the... what trouble you're going to cause? No, but then at you least... You would get stuck. Yeah. You would get stuck. Susanna, come out, your fist would be up your own arse. <laughs> Harry from Canterbury wants to know whether any of us have ever had any cruel nicknames. Um, he claims that he's uh, quite tall and rather hirsute, and he says he's often called Lurch or Wolfie. Um, he's always thought that Carl looks a bit like Mr Potato Head. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, there's no potato that round, but um, I suppose you could fashion a potato to be that round. <laughs> yeah. Maybe we could, if anyone can uh, carve a potato into the roundest head ever, <laughs> yeah. pop a couple of eyes on it.
Make um, it look as much like Carl as possible. Exactly. But yeah, did any nicknames? Did you ever have a nickname, uh, Rick? No, I was boring. I didn't have any. It was just around the name, like Jerv or something like that. No, I didn't have nicknames. I always wanted a nickname. Um, I just thought it was quite cool for some reason, particularly because gangsters always seem to have nicknames. Lefty. You know, fingers. Yeah. Lefty, yeah. Uh, Scarface. Yeah. And so I, I decided that I thought, because no one was giving me a nickname at school, it was kind of annoying, or certainly not to my face, yeah. that I decided to just come up with one. Yeah. And so I went, I remember I was at lunch once, and I just said to my mate Phil... How old were you? Uh, 12, 13. Brilliant. I just said to him, uh, <laughs> Phil, um, don't know if you know, mate, but, um... People aren't calling me Steve anymore. Everyone's everyone's calling me Spud now. Now I don't know why I thought Spud. It's weird we should talk about Mr. Potato. Head. I don't know why I thought Spud was a was a cool nickname. I just sort of, I think it's, it's a grown up it, name though, isn't it? And it's also because I think it sounded like uh, it was probably either something that you'd find in one of those kids books, like the Famous Five or like the Bash Street Kids. They'd be Spud. And I always imagine with Spud, he's not the leader of the gang, but he's a reliable member. I think you know Spud I mean? is the biggest lorry driver in one yeah. particular sort of uh, car park. Yeah. Here comes Spud. Yeah. And he gets out, all right, boys. And he's big and massive. And it, Spud can eat two breakfasts. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But I just in my mind it was yeah that I would be one day part of a gang. And it's I'm Pinky. This is Joe Joe and the tall guy Spud. And you know, catch on, never really it? caught. And he just went, oh yeah, right. And no one started. And I was hoping he'd go. You know, everyone's calling Steve Spud. Yeah. But of course, hey Spud. The first time I said Spud, you go what? <laughs> yeah, exactly. You'd be really proud, wouldn't you? No. <laughs> Did you have a nickname? Um, not not really. I mean, there was a lot of people on the estate that I grew up on. You know, nicknames are, are big things on estates and that. Yeah. Um, a lot of my dad's mates, right? What, what their nicknames did was tell you about them. Do you know how I said about the Elephant Man's a good name? Yeah. Because, like, you know what you're going to get. If someone said, Elephant Man's popping around in a bit, it wouldn't <laughs> be a shock when he walked in. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so so it, was, it worked in that sort of uh, sort of thing. You know, so there was, uh, there was John the Screw, right? John the Screw? Yeah. Whether he had sex a lot or he worked in a prison? No, he had a DIY shop. <laughs> <laughs> So, so you had him, right? right? There was, uh, <laughs> there was Fred the Veg, yeah. Which is, yeah. I assume time. it's because he was at the same IQ as you, yeah. or, or or he was in a coma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. There was, there was, uh, there was my uncle Tattoo Stan. All oh, right. right. Yeah. He had, he had like loads of tattoos that he'd just done himself. Oh my right. God. The the problem <laughs> was because he did his tattoos himself. Oof. The ones on his left arm were really good because <laughs> <laughs> he was right-handed. On his right arm, rubbish. Right? <laughs> um, so so there was him. Oh, great. And there was um, Jimmy the Hat. Jimmy who, the Hat. Yeah. Did and he that, always wear a hat? No, he didn't. That that's that was the point there. That he, he never wore a hat. That's amazing. Brilliant. How can you pick up on someone never wearing a hat? How would you ever notice? I'll tell you what, I've noticed something about Jimmy. What? Go on. He doesn't wear a hat. <laughs> why, why was he not called Jimmy the Parrot? Because he, he never carries a parrot. <laughs> no, uh, that's just the way, I mean, that's how they work, isn't it? I mean, here, that, that, here comes Jimmy Three Legs. Why'd you call him that? He hasn't got three legs. I didn't really have one apart from, um, like, I had a CB. You know, like when you'd go on a CB radio and have a chat to people. Oh, this was a craze in the, uh, was it late 70s, early 80s? Sort of early 80s. And, uh, it was just short band radio, wasn't it? Everyone had these little handsets, and they'd speak to each other in the sort of local area. Yeah, it was mainly. I think it started off with like lorry drivers, and isn't that. it? Yeah, truckers. Yeah, because there was that that thing from like about nineteen seventy. Convoy was convoy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so I had one of them, and the handle. I had. I had two. Handle means names. your nickname. Your yeah, name. there's loads of code, code stuff. Yeah. Um, I had. I had a couple. I had. Um, there was Pilky O one, because right. like I say, there's a lot of Pilkingtons and that. In Manchester, so if someone's Pilky O2, it's open. Do you know what I mean? They can have it. And then, um. <laughs> like, it's, like, it's people scrabbling for, oh, yeah. I, want Pil <laughs> I want a Pilky O1. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, because I did boxing and that. Well, you did it once. <laughs> yeah. I'd, uh, I'd box a boy. Because I thought that that's quite a good image as well. That's kind of like people going, oh, don't mess with him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. If he asks what your handle is, tell him. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. It's box a boy and that. Yeah. So. Just had them two, and I used to just go on there and. Pointless. What is the point of this? Well, you just you just meet people, don't you? And you so don't meet people. You say, "What's your handle?" You go, "Box boy." What's yours? Uh, uh, rubber duck. All right. Cheers. No, it's but ridiculous. then but then you'll say like, then you go, "Oh, uh, what's your twenty? What's that mean? That's where are you? Well, why don't you say where are you? 
because just in case there's someone who's listening in who who you know you hear about this all the time don't you people listening jotting stuff down all oh, right so just in case someone in the world doesn't know what handle means that they're, they're out of the loop they're yeah. out of the loop. It's hardly the, it's not a difficult code to crack, is it? Yeah. If you're trying to track someone. It's hardly the head of the mafia talking to each other because the FBI are on the wire. It's ridiculous. Like I go, oh, he keeps saying that. What's your handle? And they come back with something else. Like, I can't work out what's going on. No, it's like it's like anything, isn't it? That's what codes. That's what you know, that's what codes are all about, isn't it? You set them up and that. Go on and tell me, tell me the code then. Reveal it long last to the world what yeah. these codes are. Right. So, yeah. what's your twenty? Where oh, are you? This is better than the Enigma. Yeah. Right now, here we go. Right. How many candles are you burning? Uh, does that mean how big's your car or something like that? Horsepower or something? See? No, that's that's. How oh, old what are you? time is it? No, how old are you? What how old are you? Okay. Right. right. Um, how many candles are you burning? Of course. Yeah. So what's the, what's the answer? Come back. You go. Uh, I'm fifteen. Fourteen. Brilliant. That code. <laughs> that code. There's no one gonna work that out. I wish you'd have kept a diary of this because this has been fascinating. <laughs> now and again. Someone will come in and go uh, side on, right? What's that mean? And that means like there's someone sat there listening into Ooh. this chat and going, "This sounds interesting." Yeah, no, it does. Unlikely. Yeah. And they they want to join in, so they sort of go side on. You go side on, bring it in, right? And they go, "All right." <laughs> How many candles are you burning? <laughs> yeah. What's your twenty? Yeah. See you later. What's your twenty? How many candles are you burning? <laughs> oh. I mean, it seems to me that what you should have done is make made a note the first time, so that when you then speak to them again, you don't need to ask them those questions. Can I just confirm that you're burning 15?